If you look at the digestive profile of the common housefly, which we all know about, and you think, oh my god, that can just eat about everything, the black soldier flies enzymatic profile on digestions actually broader in spectrum. So this will actually eat and bioconvert more than house flies. Now, house flies are going to work at a wider temperature range than uh, black soldier fly, and you're going to see them in the cooler times. They'll also work in more anaerobic conditions and, and lower oxygens, which is why a stinky pod tends to have house flies, and a nice smelling pod tends to have black soldier flies. So you, you, you want to let your nose sort of dictate the next step, and it is about monitoring odors. I, if I can impart one thing of importance on you, it's monitoring odors and maintaining a moisture profile balance that is really conducive to maximize the species. They ain't going to do well in dry pods. They're not going to do well in wet pods. Yes, sir. Crystal, right? Yeah. Flies with black soldiers competing, or can they be on the same mass? As? Houseflies? Yeah, we'll um, they will outcompete houseflies. Um, but the first. Will they attack them? Or just over. over they overpower them. them. I don't know if they actually consume them and eat them. Um, I think they just overpower them. I notice almost every one of my new setup pods, the first two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks, are houseflies. Though the last season I've mitigated, and I have little tricks to stop it now. Um, they tend to fade away at, by, by week three, and black soldier fly dominates. The house flies have a shorter life cycle. You'll be able to tell the difference, and I'll show you how to tell the difference. It has to do with the wriggle. So the wiggle, the wriggle, is erratic on house flies. Black soldier flies are more of like a, a, a wavy undulation. Yeah, the, 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 the grubs. And uh, it's more of an undulation. Um, they're also smaller, house flies are smaller, and bless you, they don't have a color change when they hit the last instar too. So, yes, Keith. I just remembered something that might add to the answer to his question. Yeah. I read that the um, soldier flies secrete a chemical that repels house flies. Yes, and it probably is either the black soldier fly itself or a microbe associated symbiotically with it. So let's say there's, I don't know, 15 major microbes associated with the black soldier fly colony. Maybe that's what's causing the em emissions because those microbes know that, okay, we do better when there's black soldier flies, so we're going to emit something to prevent, you know, house flies. So it could be the microbes, it could be the black soldier fly, but it is probably a chemical signals is my hunch. I have not seen much research on that, but I know that the effluent, which is the liquid that runs off the pods, is really good at uh, inhibiting houseflies. It's also good at attracting pregnant females. So that's a little side thing that I'd like to share with you. That's pregnant female, black soldier. Black soldier fly, <laughs> pregnant female. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. So well with the yeah, no, not, not homo sapien. I don't capture a lot of liquids in my big pods, but I have some smaller uh, prototype pods that I use just to generate liquids and uh, I capture it in a small tray and I save it and I freeze it and in the spring I know that it is going to attract pregnant females faster than the food scraps so I usually take a sponge and I just coat the inside of it and uh, it also helps uh, ward away the house flies a little bit too not, not completely and, and again I don't know if it's black soldier fly secretions or if it's a microbe secretions or or neither it could be something else some tertiary thing but it works either way is cool yeah <laughs> either way is cool um but that has definitely worked for me again try to remember that black soldier fly females do not oviposit do not lay eggs directly on the food scraps so you want to take advantage of that tendency house flies always lay eggs on food scraps. If you see eggs on food scraps, that's housefly. Scoop it out and throw it over your shoulder. I know a lot of you have a guttural reaction to houseflies and the larva because there are pathogens associated with that and you, you should be concerned. Um, houseflies, because they live uh, many months as adults, they stop different places and they feed as adults and because of that, they're vectors for a lot of bad pathogens. They transmit it from place to place where they land. 
And because of that, um, whatever they infest also has those pathogens. Great thing about black soldier fly is, as adults, they have no mouth parts, so they don't tend to feed. Now, they may pollinate because of maybe vibrations or maybe it's a breeding site. I, I have not read much about why they would pollinate, but it might have to do with a breeding location or maybe a vibrational importance or maybe something else that I'm not aware of. But I know that they don't feed as adults uh, because they don't even have mouth parts. In fact, they only live about two weeks maximum, the adults. And so their whole purpose is to breed. So don't worry about pathogens with black soldier fly. Um, it is a lot um, of an issue with more the pod contents than the black soldier fly itself. And why? Why would there be pathogens that could be harmful in a, in a, in a pod? Well, think about it. all your food scraps, some from restaurants, some from your house, maybe some from a bin in the backyard. There could be pathogens in there. And even if they eat 99% of everything you throw in, that 1% still in there, and it could be on the outside of their bodies. So you just want to play it cautious. Don't put open wounds in the pod. Uh, don't go doing anything that could contaminate yourself, just like with vermiculture, same thing. You're putting food scraps in a worm bin. There could be potential pathogens in your food scraps. Just play it safe, okay? So no, no, no open wounds, uh, no snacking. So, there's going to be a lecture on etymophagy probably in the next six months on it. I don't know who's going to do it, but uh, Europeans are looking at this for food for humans. And uh, we work with some researchers from Europe on hopefully helping to bring forward a, a unit that is a self-contained system for the northern climates that includes, a, you know, maybe a breeding chamber as well, which would be awesome for places like Alberta, where it doesn't even have summer. Uh, what else about the biology path that you think is relevant or important to mention? Uh, we talked about the digestive enzymes. We talked about the fact that they're not vectors. Um, they don't bite. They don't sting. What they look like. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll show it to you. Oh, yeah. Um, looks like an iridescent mud wasp. Would you say a blue, purple tinge maybe a little bit? Subtle? And it, it looks like a bad flying wasp, in my opinion. It doesn't oh, look... Mimic, it? it is a mimicry. There's a lot of mimicry going on because they're just vulnerable to being eaten by every bird. In fact, the birds sometimes hang out areas where the pods are because they like to eat the adults. Um, but uh, they're poor flyers. So when you see something that's having difficulty flying, that tends to be black soldier fly, I've noticed. Um, but... Uh, you rarely see them. Uh, it's not something that's very common around the pods. We design the pods so that they actually, there's a, see this bump here? They actually climb up underneath the bump and the females go in through there. There's enough of a gap. I, I see them maybe a dozen, two dozen times the whole season actually crawl in my pod, even though I know they're going in there because I got tons of maggots. Um, but I rarely see them. Occasionally, if I'm force hatching, I'll see them. But think of, a, think of a, like a mud wasp as, as what they resemble. It doesn't look like a house fly at all. Uh, but they are Diptera. Uh, Kingdom phylum class, order, family, genus, species. Kingdom phylum class, order, Diptera, <coughs> flies. So this is a fly. So that's uh, how they're classified. Yes, Keith? Has anyone studied the uh, associated microorganisms? It is all about the microbes. And we're going to learn more about the microbes over the next 10 years and how, how important they are. Um, it's funny because there's companies that grow this for the reptile trade, you know, herp, herp trade, and they sell it at enormously expensive amounts online. And they tend to be grown in sterile environments in, like a, in, in, in a scientific lab setting. And you look at those grubs, and if you were to take some and put them in a pod, they don't have as much bioconversion activity as the wild caught stuff and we're thinking it has to do with the microbes that are coming in on the eggs, that are coming in with the females, that are associated with the natural fauna uh, and flora of, of this species. The microbes make the activity go even better than just the black soldier fly gnome. So it, it is a symbiotic relationship which is really important. Um, so I think we're going to learn more, Keith, about the microbes and how critical they are. I'm hoping that there's like a little inoculant, you know, like what we do for peas and other legumes, you know, we do the inoculant. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next five years there's some 
little powder that goes in and said, oh, just put the little micro powder in. And uh, this is going to probably take off like vermiculture took off a couple years ago. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we're just one of the first in the market uh, because the, the founders of our company have been researching it for about 10 years. Anybody have questions about biology besides Pat? Uh, mine's not a question, it's more a comment. Uh, Dr. Richard McDonald, my entomologist friend, um, Dr. McBug, he says that all grubs in the Deptera family, I'm going to stop using the M word, um, actually make their own antibiotic in their feeding area. So they exude an antibiotic, so they actually are making things safe for themselves. Which means that, although I know that there is some evidence of pathogens being transferred, it's probably not nearly as high as one would think because they're actually making something that reduces the um, pathogens. It also probably encourages the correct microbes. Right. Yes, for sure. There are, there's correct biology and there's incorrect biology. Yes? So how, how does it work with the, the grade of um, the food degrading? Um, the you know, amount of degrading in the food, like vermiculture, they, you know, they want food that's a little bit degraded. D, that's a great question. Okay, I and I'm glad you answer it. Like Who has a worm bin here? Okay, you, yeah, I know Brian has one. Um, how many weeks would you say it takes to take mixed food waste and break it down for worms? What would your guess be? Depends. Give a range. Give a range. If you have enough worms, they can process about a third of their weight per day. Okay, good. Okay. But it needs a, the biology needs to be there. They're not doing it. Right. It's the so it's, it's the microbes that are helping to break down the food scraps. We found that the, the difference between vermiculture and red worms breaking down versus black soldier fly breaking down, the black soldier fly's digestive enzymes are faster than the composting microbes. So they actually break food down faster than the microbes. It's crazy scary. So if you have a, 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 a up and functioning pod and you saw an armadillo that just got hit on the road and you decided just to take that armadillo and throw it in, it'll be gone in two days. <laughs>